Now, there's a technique that will get you more keepers when the light is low or when you're struggling with your settings. I'll show you it a little bit later on. My ears are getting cold already. Now, what I'm looking for is a tree that stands out. I think I'm following the path, but I'm not 100% sure. Oh, I think I might have one here. So this is what I'm looking at. Got these two trees, we've got the fog rolling in, and we've got this iced over lake in the background with the dusting of snow. I'm thinking this one and that one with the haze between it gives a bit of separation. But by separation, I just mean they look further apart. So it makes your subject stand out. And right on cue, that fog just lifts a little bit. Sometimes you just want to change perspective. And one way to do this is just to get low. It just changes the position of the horizon compared to your subject. I'm trying to get this tree with a darker background. It's really tricky. And then the sky is so white that it just blends into that sky. Although there is another little tree right next to it that could make for a good subject. Now, while I'm waiting for that fog to roll in, I'll tell you a little bit about this technique that I use to get more keeper shots, especially when that light's low. It's basically a really simple one, but the purists out there will probably think that I'm a bit of a lazy photographer. I'll put my hand up. I am a little bit of a lazy photographer. Anything that makes my job easier, taking photographs that work, I'm all for it. Basically, what you do is put your camera in drive mode and then fire off a lot of shots. The problem with lower shutter speeds is that you might be taking a shot, but the actual motion of you pressing the button will add some motion into the camera. If you have it in drive mode, you'll press it, and some of those shots in the middle, your finger's not gonna be moving, your hands aren't gonna be moving, and you'll just stabilize. And I've found this is a really good way to get some shots like this. And like this, and like this. And if you don't want to get your tripod out or you don't think it's that good a photograph, you can still fire off five or six shots and chances are one of them will be pin sharp and in focus perfectly. Oh, come on, Fog. Come on. <laughs> it's not doing it. Now to keep making you these videos for free, I just wanna quickly talk about today's sponsor. It's a glove company I think you'll really like. And if you're a winter shooter, you'll know the all too common problem with photographing in these colder months. It's your hands getting painfully cold. Valorette is a Norwegian company and they have some pretty harsh testing grounds and it really shows. Now the great thing with these Valorette photography gloves is that they all have these flippy finger caps so you can carry on shooting without getting cold hands. There is a glove for every every condition from mild winter outings to some of the harshest conditions out there. Through the autumn, I've been using the Milford Photography Glove, and these are fantastic for when it's not too cold outside, but you need a bit of warmth and protection. I like these because they're not too bulky, and if the rain starts coming down, I can just put on the outer shell, which is stored in the back of the gloves themselves. Even when it's not raining, but the wind picks up and your hands are getting a bit cold, these outer layers really protect you from that cold biting wind. Whereas if I'm summiting a peak, the Tinden photography gloves are fantastic. They still have those flippy fingers to get to the dials and the buttons on your camera. Get your own pair at photographygloves.com and get free shipping with a discount code Mike Smith. Now back to the video. Now, another reason why you might want to use this technique of putting it in drive mode instead of getting your camera on a tripod is because it just saves time. You might only have a few hours at that location or you might be walking with your family. If you've got it in drive mode, there's not much light about, you'll fire off a load of shots, 
one of them will be okay. While I was driving to this location, I did spot a few really interesting trees that also were covered in this frost. And in this situation, this is when I really use this drive mode technique. I don't have to get my tripod out. If I'm blocking someone's drive or anything like that, we'll fire off a load of shots, jump back in the car, and you'll be away before you get in anyone's way. Now, because that fog has lifted, there's not as much separation, but I think I've spotted a composition, but it's a bit further down the road. So I'm gonna keep an eye on the traffic and see what I can get. It's a bit dangerous when you're shooting like that. Ooh, made it. <laughs> Not sure if that shot worked, but we'll see later on. Now I've found a shot that I really like here, but I want to shoot at F8. I'm at 200 millimeters and at F8 at ISO 100, I've got one hundredth of a second. Now I could raise the ISO to get that shutter speed up to one two hundredth of a second or faster following that shutter speed focal length rule, but I might not want to do that. I might want to keep the ISO at 100. If you want to do that, just put it in drive mode. So I'm in drive mode and then I'm going to fire off a load of shots and I know one of those will be okay. So because that fog's not coming back in, I'm gonna get separation by using a shallower depth of focus. I'll put the 85 on, which goes to 1.8. I'm gonna try and bring this tree out from the background by blurring that background quite a bit. So if you are struggling in low light conditions, or you're noticing that a lot of your shots are blurred, try this technique. You never know, you might get some absolutely amazing shots with really, really low shutter speeds, and you'll be surprised at what you can actually get. So it doesn't look like that fog's coming back in anytime soon. Probably missed it and I probably got here a little bit late. I've got one or two shots that I like though, but when the conditions are like this, I find it really hard to go home when I probably should do. <laughs> 